tractors with BB trucks. And uh, EMD said, uh, no, we don't think so. And they created that D truck that apparently worked out very well. They were under- As Greg said, they, uh, they developed the Flexicoil eight axle truck and it, it really worked well. They built a lot of them actually. They, uh, mm -hmm. cause I think they built, uh, weren't there about Craig 50 of these things? Uh, uh, 45, there, there were 30 original DD-35s, which were without cabs, and then they ordered them with cabs, uh, the DD-35A, and they got 15 of those. Okay. So 35. And then, and then they used the same truck under the uh, DD-40, and there were, what, 40 of those or something? 47. 47. So, so almost 100 units. Yeah. And they ran and ran, and they, they got a lot of mileage out of these things. But then they put them under those... Um, DDM 45s in Brazil. There are lots of those. Yes. SD 45s with uh, narrow gauge DD trucks. Yeah. Ross, you said there were eight axles. Yeah, there's eight axles. So there's a traction motor here, 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 and here. So, so and then there's this, this, and then you got four on the rear truck. Yeah, four yeah. on the rear truck too. That's yeah, a four axle truck. Yeah. Okay. If we ever get back to Ross's, he's got he's got models of these. Yeah, I've got uh, a few pictures of uh, of your. Uh, um, is Craig? Uh, you made one of these. This is a DD thirty five B, which I believe SP had a few of them too. Uh, yeah, I think three of them. Yeah, and there's the demo, which never they never made. And this is also um, this is the plan they got from EMD. And so this was originally, and of course, Am Atherin jumped on it right away, and they made a DD40. Well, Atherin never, or the EMD never made a DD40. So it looks- That's a nice model. It, yeah, it's, a, but it's, a, it look, it's almost identical to the DD35, so we call it that. Uh, fans are a little bit different, and, and uh, um, but yeah, those, those, uh, those were, uh, Atherin would put, uh, a motor here and a motor there and uh so yeah. it was and they were heavy so they were they're were good pullers yeah now not all four axles on a truck would be driven for a model though would it i think they yeah. i think i think so yeah yeah they had a they, they had have a, flanges on the wheels yeah yep. yeah they had enough pl uh play uh oh, lateral that's how did it. play yeah Atherin did a good mm -hmm. job i i was really impressed okay. with Atherin was really smart he he figured out how to do this stuff. Yeah, they have enough lateral play on the on the um, um, on the axles, and then they had the uh, the gears inside, and then they had the, the a worm gear on one end, and and uh, then they had the motor. And then they had also had a single motor one, they were the long shaft, but but uh, they work pretty well. So here's the DD thirty five A. First thing, I think uh, Craig, they came out with the B units first, right? And the idea was right. to put a you put a, right. uh, a, a GP35 on one end, a GP35 on the other end, and then you have two. I think I got a picture someplace in, in here. Yeah, here it is. This is this was the idea. So you get 20,000 uh, or 15,000 horsepower. You have Actually, a, it's an SD45 on that. Yeah, but but it, but anyway, they'd have a, a GP35. Okay. A B unit, B unit, and a GP35. Yeah, you're right. It is an SD45. So these are running, but that was kind of the concept. Yeah. And um, yeah, here's an A and a B. And then later on, they said, well, let's build A's. And so there's an E unit. And there's the a, a U50B and then the DD35A. And the, the DD35A was obviously much more successful. Yeah, they don't even look anywhere near the same. Oh. You never know they were the same horsepower, same track of effort. <clears throat> then then um, in 1969, they so they came out with that model that the Atherin showed there. And then uh, UP said, well, we want to upgrade it because because General Motors had come up with their their dash two electronics with modular uh, transistors and and uh, very advanced wheel slip and stuff like that. And they'd also upgraded the engine to the SD50 um 3300 horsepower uh per 
per engine, uh, six, uh, 16 cylinder engine. So, so General Motors said, well, okay, we'll build a, a DD40 um, that's going to be 6,600 horsepower. And then they came up with this because the Canadians had come up with this concept of a, a, a wide cab. And uh, so this is the cab off the F45 on this engine. And, and so these things were 60, 6,600 horsepower. They were numbered in the 6,900s because they had their, their um, they first showed up at the centennial, the centennial of the, of the UP, which is 1969. But these things, I forget what, the, they were in the millions, millions of miles they ran on these things. I think one of them, didn't one of them hit 10 or 15 million miles? I mean, it was just, it was- I don't know just, about that. I know they were running them 40,000 miles a month. Yeah. And they, they just ran them and ran them and ran them. And they, yeah. uh, they were not, <laughs> they were, 98 and a half feet long and the reason it was no longer was because that was the absolute size of the erection bay at emd they couldn't have moved them down the erection bay if they were any longer than 98 feet six inches <laughs> and if you want to see one go to omaha i'll tell you when you drive across a bridge from uh, from council bluffs on i-80 High up on the hill, there's a, there's a DD A40X and a big boy sitting right on top of the hill. You cannot miss it. it takes your breath away. So if they ran them forty thousand miles a month, and and they ran them twelve, well, say a lot of them ran twelve years or longer. That's six million miles. That's six million miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of, I mean, that's a lot of miles. There are astronauts that didn't get 6 million miles. So, um, yeah, they, it was really a good design. Yeah. Yeah, do I got know, to see him run a couple of times. That was fun. Do you know of any um, particular challenges that were unique for engineers driving those, those engines? Um, Hold tight to the reins. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, the cabs were really good, good visibility. Uh, they rode really well. That was what they were really impressed with. They that they uh, that that four axle truck rode just like it was beautiful. And and um, a, cu a couple months ago, I, I put out a, vi a video of film I took when they were cruising by at seventy miles an hour, and and uh, they just just rode beautifully. So. So this thing, I have no idea why they would need, there's four of those and an SD40. So that would be, what's four times 6,600 plus 3,000? <laughs> it's just, you'd think you pulled the coupler out. I don't know. Anyway, that's in Cheyenne. So four of those things. That's just amazing. So there they are. Yeah, 98 and a half feet long. 29,000 horsepower. So here's the DD40, which they never built, but they said they were going to build, and, they, and it was offered, but um, but nobody bought them. So here's a display unit someplace at one of the uh, fairs or something. And there's Craig's model, that's uh, that's running on the on the layout, and this is from a video. So that's how they'd run them. SD40 and back. Here's here's uh, crossing the bridge. And they would sometimes get get off the property. They go all the way to Chicago, but they were they were. Here's the uh, uh, Craig. You want to talk about this? This was one one you actually built because they nobody ever made a, a B unit. Yeah, I. Uh, it was a it, it's a it's a dummy. There's no motor in it. Uh, it was a uh, an Athern DD40, and then with an extra DD40 shell and a couple of GP35 shells. So uh, the, the walkway, well, I'm, I'm using my, uh, my pointer here, but you can't see it. But uh, the walkway and the butt end of it, if you look at the, uh, uh, where, where the dynamic brake blister is, from the dynamic brakes to the, to the rear, going the other way to the rear, that's from, okay. the, that's oh, from, from the DD40. This but is then the, the, from the but from the dynamic brakes to the center, that's off a of GP35. Yeah, because it's got the right fans. Okay. 
Right. So, uh, so just cutting them up and putting them together, and there it was. I thought that ain't bad. No, and there were thirty of them, and they ran them, and they even showed up in Minneapolis because I, I know um, hmm. uh, Jim Henshaw, who was an engineer on the on the Northwestern, had pictures of them at Cedar Lake. So, ah. yeah, wow. And apparently a U-50 got up here and uh, they took it in the house and knocked the horns off because it was, it was, oh yeah, tall. it sat pretty high. It was too tall. I heard with the uh, UP's inter interchange with the Rock Island, the Rock Island has said no six axle power. Yeah. <laughs> and they wound up having a U-50 B plus B shove up in Chicago on the Rock Island. Yeah. And, oh my God, how many of their bridges did they wreck getting yeah. there? So they had to find some different way to get it back home. Yeah, here's your here's the B unit again. So that was good, good model. So here's that there they have uh, several of these are running around. Uh, this is on a uh, um, executive train or something like that. Or... That 6936 might be the only one that's running around. The only one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. The uh, the guy who runs the, uh, the 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 railroad out in Mitchell, he goes from Mitchell, South Dakota to Chamberlain. It's got one sitting in Chamberlain, okay. rusting away. There's one at the Portola Museum in California. Yeah, Utah Railway Engine. Yep. Yeah, five thousand five. Yeah. Uh, Morrison Knutson uh, Construction Company, and also built. They had a locomotive rebuilding uh, uh, plant in. Um, Boise. They still have it, actually. It's still there. I think it's owned by Wabtec now, but take General Motors and General Electric on and beat them in the locomotive game, if you can imagine. And so they came up with this, and it sort of looks like a GM sort of, I don't know, hybrid GM GE. It's a 5,000 horsepower. It's a 5,000 horsepower Caterpillar engine in back, a 16-cylinder engine. And uh, so they built these things, and it, they cost a fortune to build. And um, they demonstrated them. I think I got a picture of one someplace back here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, there's the there's the picture. It's an MK 5000C. And uh, and so if the cat engine was kind of an oddball, it worked okay. But but um, um, eventually, what happened is they sold these to like Utah Rail Utah Railroad and some of these other companies that uh, I, I think um, have them. And then they put a basically uh, the guts out of an old SD50. So they're 30, uh, 3,300 horsepower uh, General Motors stuff inside the hood. But if you can imagine the, 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 the hubris of taking General Motors and General Electric on who have been building locomotives for, for 50 to 80 years, and you're going to beat them at their own game. So any lot, I don't know, it costs tens of millions to build these damn things. And then but they're still running around because I mean that, that second engine in the picture I I I had got a picture of that thing over at Pig's Eye here a couple months ago. But that's the weirdest looking thing from a cab back. It's an SD forty five, but it's got that special cab on it. There's nothing like it anywhere else. Yeah, it it's must. Like, well, they must have taken one of these things, and uh, I don't know. That'd be interesting. I have to I have to do some research on on what the heck that Maybe is. Maybe it had an accident, and that's what they had to put on. Could be, could be. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, our friends at Genesee in Wyoming um, got some of them, and uh, so they're still they're still running around, but they're all now they're all now uh, SD fifties in disguise. Or did did <laughs> Genesee in Wyoming get hold of them, or did Genesee in Wyoming take over Utah Railway? I think that's probably what happened. Oh, you're absolutely right. There's a UR there. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They're buying railroads everywhere. You're absolutely right. Good catch. I didn't see the UR. Okay. Yeah, they have the Rapid City and Eastern. Um, they bought that from uh, uh, Duluth. What was it? Dakota, Minnesota, and East uh, Eastern. <coughs> so they have track from from. Uh, they run from basically Rapid City to um, uh, to Winona, Minnesota. Apparently, what what the deal is uh, with that is they pick up these small railroads. And then they can uh, look after all the administrative things for all of them. And it yeah. keeps the costs, spreads the costs way out over a whole lot of smaller railroads. 
it's a that's a way to do it because a small railroad keeping up with all the regulations and hazardous waste and all that stuff would be really hard to do. Yeah. So what was the name of this engine? M there it is, MKC, MK 5000 C. Oh, all right. Anyway, that's high horsepower units. Wow. But uh, uh, they do they they flirt with this every few years and then they go back to standardized units because it, it doesn't work to have specialized units. 